Hey guys, Caitlin here. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the Usborn books that I have either collected from my house that I already owned or purchased this year for Classical Conversations Cycle 1. Now, I am not an Usborn consultant. I just really, really love their books and feel like they have a ton of fantastic um, educational books that go along with CC. And so every year I get a bunch um, to add to our library and I like to film these videos so I can show you guys the insides of the books because I don't know about you, but I don't really like to purchase things not knowing what's inside them, um, especially because so on several occasions I've bought books and then found that there was something in there that I did not want my kids to be reading or we didn't agree with or whatever. So um, I like to show you kind of what what the insides look like. So what that's what this video is going to be about. Um, now, a couple of things. One, I... Some of these are books that I bought three years ago when we first started CC, and so I cannot guarantee that they're still on the website. I did not go and check to see if every single one of these is on the website. So apologies in advance if you see one that looks amazing and then you go to buy it and it's not there anymore, so don't hate me. <laughs> if you do not have a Usborne consultant, I would guess someone that you know is one, and so you can ask around and find someone um, and order through them and bless them. But if you don't know anyone who is one, I'll link um, someone below or maybe even a couple of friends of mine who are Usborne consultants. So if you don't have someone, you can use one of those links, but I encourage you to go find someone that you know personally and to you know help them out with their business. But anyway, um, so what I've got is just a variety of books that cover things like history, timeline, um, science. The biggest category this year is science because this, the first chunk of our science for cycle one is about animals. So like literally any book about animals, you can make it fit into cycle one science, right? So I already had quite a few books that were about animals and also about flowers and plants because that's part of cycle one science as well. And then I bought a few more that were about animals. So my science section this year is really big because there was just, I mean, Usborne has tons of books about animals. I had to stop myself. I had a huge wish list. Didn't buy everything because, you know, I got a budget. But um, there's just a lot of options about animals. Um, and then, like I said, plants and flowers and that kind of stuff. There's several books about that. And weather. So there was just a lot of science options. And they have tons more on their site that I didn't even purchase. So lots of options with that. Um, for reference, my kids are five and seven. So my seven-year-old just started reading last year. And um, so he is kind of getting to where he can read some of these books. Well, he can read all of these on his own now, actually. But um, we're still kind of in the picture book phase. You know, I do have some of the encyclopedias, but I have not yet gotten, you know, the history encyclopedia that's really popular or the big science encyclopedia that's really popular. If you're in like the Facebook groups for CC, you see those mentioned a lot. I still don't own those yet after three years because my kids are just little. That is something I do want to get eventually, but we have not purchased those yet. So the things you're going to see me share are things that are more appropriate for that younger elementary age, since that's the age of my kids. And then a couple of things that are good for all ages. So anyway, let's flip the camera around and get started. We've got a lot of books to get through. All right, we'll start with Timeline. So I have shown this one every single year. Um, I hope this is still on their website. I don't know because I didn't check, but it is such a fantastic book that goes so well with all three cycles because it, it just matches perfectly with our timeline. I feel like it is a must have for everyone's library that is a Classical Conversations family. So it just um, is exactly what it is talks about it is a timeline and it shows you what was going on in different parts of the world at different ty times in history but it talks about so much of the stuff that we address in our timeline so there's mesopotamia indus valley civilization minoans mycenaeans babylon and assyria It is just a wonderful book. Um, it's definitely more for older kids. However, my kids, you know, I sit there and read it to them and they enjoy it too. I mean, we don't sit and read it all the way through, but it's a great reference. And then you can just, you know, there's a little blurb about Charlemagne. That's cycle two, but, um, you know, still stuff that's in the timeline. Samurai, Vikings. The Mongols. It just addresses so many different things. 
that we sing about and that there's the hundred years war, the black death. <laughs> um, so if you are, you know, if you've been around CC for a year or two, you recognize so much of this stuff. I just feel like it is a must have book for every CC family. So I really hope it's still on there because it's wonderful. So anyway, and it goes all the way to um, the 20th century up to 1999. So it's not like super, super current, but it's pretty current. I mean, there's the Cold War, Vietnam War. And you'll see as, as we go through the timeline, it changes which parts of the, um, the world it's talking about and comparing. But anyway, there's that. So really cool resource. Another one that's not quite as in depth as that first timeline book is this history of the world in pictures, but it still um, touches on a lot of things that your kids will recognize. Hittites, Minoans, Assyrian Empire, Babylon, Genghis Khan, Magna Carta, Crusades. So it's just, again, another like quick little snapshot all about different things that there's guillotine that we learn about all throughout all three cycles of CC. So that's a great one. All right, another history resource is this Usborne Beginners History Box Set. Now, I just bought this one this year, so this is currently on the website, but it has all these books that cover a ton of stuff in history. So this is good for cycle one and also cycle two because castles and Vikings, that's gonna be more cycle two. The rest of this, I think, is gonna fit in with cycle one. But these are just these small, like easy to read type books that are gonna be perfect for this age, by this age, I mean my kids' age, the five to seven age range, you know, your early readers, that kind of stuff. So there's the Stone Age, the Iron Age, Egyptians, Greeks, Celts, Romans, Maya, the Vikings and Castles, so that was for um, cycle two, and then also one just about digging up history. So I have not read all of these yet, but I am excited about them. There's Iron Age, I think these are gonna be just really good supplemental books. Here's the Egyptians. I also purchased this Usborne Illustrated Stories from the Greek Myths. So this is, the, Usborne had several different books that were about Greek mythology, um, but most of them seem to be too over my kid's head. Really long stories, maybe um, older topics, but this one seemed like it would be good. The short stories are pretty short. There's a lot of pictures. And so I think this is gonna be a good introduction to Greek mythology for my children. So you can see some different stories. Let's look in the front and see what stories are in there. So here you can see which ones are in the book. Okay, I forgot this one while I was filming, so I'm cutting this in with the other stuff. Um, that So it may be a little bit shaky because I'm not on my tripod, but this one is Time Traveler and it's got medieval times, Viking age, Roman world, and ancient Egypt. So cycle one and cycle two, but it is so cool. And it's got all kinds of cool information. Like this kid is traveling in time to these different time periods. And so he's learning. So the castles and the Vikings, that's more cycle two. But for cycle one that we're about to do, we've got the Romans and just a lot of cool information about that and then um, we've got Egyptians so very cool similar to that living long ago book that I have 
from my other um, thrift books and Amazon haul. It's kind of similar to that, but that one is no longer available and this one is, so this would be a good option. So there you go. Now moving on to some geography. I've got a couple of different atlases that I've collected over the years from Osborne. Um, you don't necessarily need to have multiple atlases, but we like them, so we have several. So here's the big picture atlas talks about different places in the world. And here's Europe, Russia, Asia, so there's that. Here's a lift the flap picture atlas. And then here is my very first Our World book. So these are just good ones to go with all the cycles because um, I just talk about different places in the world. So whatever geography you're learning about for that year um, or for that cycle, it fits well with that. This probably cycle one, this would be like the, the cycle that you would least need these, I guess, um, since we're talking more about ancient, the ancient world, but they're still good ones to have. For fine arts, we have this first book about the orchestra. This used to, you would push this button and it would play different tunes. However, my two-year-old absolutely loves this book and she played with it constantly and it has worn the battery down. So it does not work anymore, <laughs> but it's a really cool book and a great introduction to orchestra, which is like the last quarter of our CC year. So that's a good one to have as well. Now this Usborne Children's Encyclopedia, this one actually covers like multiple different subjects, but this is just kind of a introductory encyclopedia for your kids. So there's rocks and fossils. Like it's gonna cover things from all the cycles. Volcanoes, that's cycle one. Mountains. Um, it's just got a big variety of things and just a great reference book I feel like to have, especially, um, you know, for these younger kids. It's not super overwhelming. Here's amphibians, reptiles, just a lot of animal stuff, which we talk about this year. Here's some history, which, you know, stuff that we, there's ancient Rome, Egypt, Greece. Just a note, here is this page here about making a baby that may or may not be something that you are ready to talk to your young children about. So that might be one um, that you want to avoid depending on how old your kids are. But here's just kind of flipping through so you can kind of see. And I'm not, I'm kind of going like grabbing a chunk and going backwards. So sorry about that. But anyway, here's maps. Go back. So, you know, this one kind of combines a lot of things. It's got, you know, kind of your atlas in there. So if you're kind of, um, wanting to conserve space or money, this would be a good one that will actually replace several different books that Osborne sells. And I don't think it was very expensive. I want to say it was maybe $15 for this book, which is pretty amazing. Um, and I just got this one this year. So this is one that is currently available. It's like I said, not all of them, they may not be since some of them are older, but anyway, All right, so that's kind of a good overview there for you. I also have this first encyclopedia of science. So this is just science specific, and it's not like, Osborne has a big science encyclopedia that a lot of people recommend. We don't have that one yet, but we do have this one. It's small, and it may actually repeat a lot of the stuff that was in the children's encyclopedia that I just showed you. So I'm gonna have to sit down and compare and see if it has the exact same stuff because it does look very similar. I haven't looked through either of these really 
carefully yet. We just got them, but I'm thinking this may be a repeat. So I may end up selling this one um, because we don't need to have, you know, the exact same book twice. I've got this illustrated elementary science dictionary. We've had this one for a couple of years. And so it has a bunch of terminology about science that goes along with all three of the cycles. So sim very similar to the encyclopedias, but not exactly the same. You know, pictures are different, information is different. Um, so lots of similarities, but my kids love science and they love reading through these books. So I think they will enjoy having multiple ones. Let me go back here. Again, here's a page about reproduction, which we do touch on in this cycle. But again, um, depending on your comfort level with what your kids know, you may or may not want them to, to have this page yet. So I'm just trying to, try to show those kinds of things because I want to know when I'm buying the books. I want to see those things as well. So, okay. Look Inside Science. This is just a cute little lift the flat book that gives you some information about science, plants and trees, that's this cycle. Your body, that was cycle three. So this one can go for a couple of cycles. Some space, that's cycle two. I just love how they are so versatile. Here's Usborne World of Animals. I just got this one, so this is one that is a current book. Um, but it is all about just all kinds of animals all over the world. And so, like I said, any book about animal, you can make it fit into this year. <laughs> so, um, my kids are going to really enjoy that. They're really just into animals and stuff right now. So this is perfect for us. And I like that it also covers a lot of places that are maybe not quite as well known. Um, it doesn't have the same old, same old stuff that you see in every child's book about animals, you know? So, They have this whole series of these pocket books. There's mammals, there's reptiles, there's bugs. Um, I think these are like $5, they're not very expensive. So I just got the mammals one to start with because I wanted to see um, if we liked it, if my kids you know, really enjoyed it or if they just didn't really touch it a lot. But if so, I think I'll get several of the other ones. But it's just got information about a bunch of different mammals. So I think these are really cool books and I think my kids are going to enjoy them and I'm going to end up purchasing more of these, but I just wanted to get one to start with. So if you have animal lover kids, I think these books are great and I just love that they're small and inexpensive. I got this spotter's guide for rocks and minerals. We learn about rocks and minerals this year, so this is going to be a good um, addition to that, a good supplement for that one. That. This one I've had for a while, so it may not be around anymore. The Great Wildlife Search. It's more like a seek and find, but it's got a bunch of different animals and information about the animals. So kind of a fun one. I wouldn't put it up at the top of my must-have books necessarily, but we already had it on our shelf, so I just thought I'd show you in case it's still around. We got this How Flowers Grow. This is another one of those real small, easy to read books that just talks about plants, flowers. A good one for those weeks that we're talking about that kind of stuff. Look Inside Animal Homes. I just love these little with the flat books. I just think they're fun and you know, give a little bit of information without it being tons and they're just really cute. Um, sorry, it's sideways. It's hard for me to turn it and still see anything in my camera. So anyway, but Animal Homes, Under the Sea, Bug Homes, Cold Homes, Hot Homes, just a bunch of stuff about animals that you could fit in if your kids are interested in that. Seas and Oceans. So more about what lives in the sea and in the ocean. Forests, birds. Here's another How Do Flowers Grow book. This one is more of a lift the flap book as opposed to that um, early reader one I just showed you. 
this one's fun. We've had this one for a couple of years, and my kids love it. I mean, it talks about the seasons. It's got all these weird facts about flowers, like stinky flowers, big flowers. Oh, that might be the last page. Venus flytrap, that kind of stuff. Got this peek inside bug homes. So this one's just one of those, one of those early reader type little books. That's cute. Very simple. This is more like, you know, your real young children. Why do we need bees? They actually have several books about bees. This is one we have from a couple years ago, but we used to have bees at our house. And so I got this one for the kids just to kind of teach them like what was going on with our hives and you know, what's going on with our bees. So you can make that one fit in if you want to. Here is Peek Inside Animal Homes. So it kind of talks about where animals live. Kind of similar. Um, I've noticed that Usborne has will have like very similar books at different levels. So you'll end up kind of repeating information, but some is for the really young kids and some is for like your early readers, that kind of stuff. Um, so sometimes I end up with duplicates, but it is okay. My kids love them. All right, and then this last one is wild weather. We do talk about weather this year. So storms, tornadoes, I like this book. This has been good, especially to talk about, you know, storms and stuff with my kids. So, all right, that's everything. I hope that was helpful as you were trying to decide which books you want to get for this year for CC. Um, I have quite a few other videos about classical conversations that are all put together in a playlist for you. It should be somewhere on the screen here showing up in a second. So check those out if you haven't already. I also have a bunch of other videos about homeschool in general, the other curriculum we use, organizational tips, that kind of stuff. So check those out as well. So have a fantastic school year. Bye guys.